What's up guys, today I'm going to be doing some tips and tricks for my new Android users here. I've been getting a lot of questions on how to do basic stuff, so we'll implement this series on the channel here. Today is just for the new people, so 9 times out of 10, a lot of the uh, smartphone geeks on my channel, uh, you know, probably know all this stuff. But this is for the new people and people that, you know, aren't so super tech savvy. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be using a Galaxy S21 FE, mostly the Galaxy setup because Samsung ships the most, you know, Android phones in the USA. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to uh, go ahead and change the navigation bar here. So I get a lot of questions about this. How do I get these buttons? So sometimes they'll come with, you know, the swipe gestures, but people ask me, how do I get the buttons back? Uh, so this used to actually be the standard Android setup before they switched to uh, the swipe gesture thing. So we're going to swipe down, go to settings, and if you ever get lost, click on the search button and just type in what I say it's a kind of a quicker way to get there but we're gonna just do it the old school way because you need to know how to navigate your phone anyway uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click on display in these settings we're gonna scroll down here and we're going to look for our navigation bar it should be right here you're gonna click on that and you can see we're on buttons currently but we're gonna click on swipe gestures so if you ever wanna go between both and see you know which one do you prefer so the swipe gestures pretty much work how you would think they work it works basically like how you would think like an iPhone works right so I can swipe if I go into it I can if I pull up I can hold it get to my multitasking and if I'm ever like in an application if I just do a quick swipe I can just swipe really fast through so that's why a lot of people like that but I find that you know for people who don't like all that it's just easier to use the buttons you just multitasking back button this is going to be installing applications that are not on the Play Store and uh, Galaxy Store guys be very careful with this so I get a question you know how do I download Fortnite on my phone I get that question a lot so we're gonna go to Chrome guys be careful with this do not download anything from untrusted sources I would recommend just you know avoid doing that unless you really know what you're doing so but for Fortnite we're going to the official Fortnite site this is not like anything kinda shady so you're gonna type Fortnite APK and we're going to the official Epic game store you're not downloading like this crap right here you're not doing any of that don't download any of that. You're going to the official Fortnite site. So we're going to go ahead and click that. Click on get it on the Epic Game Store. For Galaxy users, you can just get it from the Galaxy Store. If you're on a regular Android, you have to get it through this way. All right, so we're going to click on that. It'll pop up. We're going to go ahead. We trust the Fortnite website. We're going to go ahead and click open here. Now, Chrome is going to ask me, do I want to install this? So it's warning us that this is not coming from an official Play Store. But we trust Epic Games. It's, it's clean. And we're going to go ahead and install that. And again, do not install stuff from untrusted sources. It's a very easy way to get your phone hacked. Alright, so you can see that now that we're in, we're just going to go ahead and download Fortnite on here. We'll go ahead and install. That's how you download Fortnite on um, you know, Android because Fortnite, they, they make you go through you know loops. They don't put it on the uh, Play Store anymore because it's more profitable, profitable for them to do it this way. So that's once you just go through the install, you'll be able to play uh, if your device is compatible with it. All right, so I'm going to show you guys a really cool tip uh, with the keyboard here. So we're going to go ahead and click on the messages, and we're just going to type a message, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, I see a lot of people, they struggle when they try to change something. Let's say you type something wrong or whatever. They sort of do this to try to get in between, and it kind of, like, takes forever. What you're going to do is hold down the space bar here and we just simply scroll like that so this is a much easier way to be able to scroll and you know get to certain letters or get to where you want to go so do this is way way faster much better you don't have to come all the way up here to do that you're all the way down here where the keyboard is so it's just like boom type 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 and then it's just a much faster get used to doing that it'll just feel more natural to you next I'm going to show you how to get to developer options so we're going back to settings here I'm going to scroll all the way down hit about phone and then we're going to go ahead and click on software information and then we're going to go ahead and tap the build number we're going to tap it keep tapping it we're going to put our pin in here alright so now it says developer mode has been turned on so now we get to play with all the developer settings in Android so now you can see if you scroll all the way down a new option pops up called developer options here what I like to do here when I get a new phone 
is I like to scroll all the way down and this is just a little thing to make your phone feel a little bit faster here uh, but they have a ton of stuff but like I said this is a little bit uh, more advanced stuff but I like to scroll all the way down here and look for something called Windows Animation so if you set this to 0.5 it gives your phone this really fast feeling bouncy feeling to it so you can see the animations are just like super snappy very quick feeling uh, it is really really nice and um, some people like it some people don't just try it out um, if you're you know kinda crazy you can turn it off completely right and you, you'll see that we have no animations it's just like instant everything is instant now I don't like that because it just kinda takes away from the the pretty animations but some people you know just like I don't I don't really care about that um, so we're not gonna stay in developer options too much because this is a lot of this is kind of getting advanced a little bit. Alright, so next this is mostly for Galaxy users is taking advantage of Samsung Edge. Now if you swipe to the left, uh, it'll bring up the Edge panel here, and then my favorite thing to use in Edge is pretty much the only thing I use it for, is to bring up the split screen applications. You can actually set your own applications here uh, if you desire to, but basically if you want to get to a, a you know dual application setup very quickly you would use the Microsoft or not the Microsoft but the Samsung Edge here alright so the next tip is we're gonna go ahead and hit the multitasking button here we're gonna go ahead and hold this down right here the icon and it brings up a ton of stuff that we can actually do so if you wanted to go split screen here uh, we, I could just select an application and go split screen like YouTube here and then if I wanted to resize it I just drag it down boom we're gonna go back. Samsung does a really great job with this pop-up view. Boom. Now I have this as a pop-up window, so I can go into other stuff, you know, sort of move it out the way, or I can just completely shrink it into a bubble, move it around. So while I'm in other stuff, my calculator is still there. Samsung does a great job with the multitasking experience here. Boom, I could just bounce right back to full screen, go back to it. Now I could actually lock this application so what that means is, and let me lock something good like uh, YouTube. I can actually lock YouTube. So if I open up a ton of applications and stuff like that, so I just have a ton of stuff going, it will prioritize YouTube. So basically, YouTube would never close. Um, it'll always be running. So it'll never close. Um, you, you, if you open a lot of applications, basically, you know, it'll start kicking other applications out. But if you need one application to always stay open, so when you go back to it, it's at the same exact spot that you left it at, um, you're going to want to go ahead and do that. And if you ever want to turn that off, of course, we just go back, unlock this application. And that's how we do that. Very easy. All right, so next is going to be a little customization tip. We're going to go to settings. And now we're going to go to wallpapers here. We're going to head to gallery. And then we can go ahead and actually add as many wallpapers as we want to our lock screen. So we can have multiple ones. You just click on these here. This one, why not? And then we're going to click done. So it just added all of these to my lock screen. And as you can see, I can go through and make sure they're all aligned correctly. Set to lock screen. So basically what this is going to do, instead of me just having one lock screen, I can have one lock screen wallpaper, I can have multiple ones. We can also change the color palette uh, if we desire to. I'll go ahead and just set it to that. Turn my phone off and boom. Now hold on. As you guys can see, turn it back on. Now my wallpapers will change. So this is just a nice way to have just multiple wallpapers instead of just having one. You can kind of see all of your wallpaper choices. So it's a very nice little cool feature uh, to have. Alright so the last little nifty feature is actually we're going to swipe down to here and we're going to go ahead and just tap on not the icon but the actual text. So you see where it says Bluetooth we're going to tap on that. And look, it'll go ahead and bring me to my quick settings very quickly. So you can see level brightness for this if I turned it on. I can get to all these quick settings really easily. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, the power saving. Uh, let's try portrait. So you can see it's like a, like a quicker way to get to certain things. Like it, it gives you like additional options. 
sound. You can see I can just go vibrate mute instead of you know having to do that extra step. I have this screen recorder. I can just mess with the settings and then boom, done, no sound. I can just get it how I want to. So just go ahead and play around with that. See how you like that. Um, brightness here is also something that I want to mention. Adaptive brightness is basically, I would I would turn this on, but I'm usually always filming indoors, so I just turn it off because it usually brings the brightness down when I don't want it to. But nine times out of 10, this will help you with uh, battery life, so I would actually keep adaptive brightness um, on here uh, for sure. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Those are just some basic tips uh, for you guys, and uh, we'll get into some more, you know, uh, you know, tips that a lot of people don't know. Uh, so that is pretty much it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.